Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to our children's book author panel um, today. And today we have four great authors with us, and I'm going to give them each a chance to introduce themselves, and then we're going to have a great conversation about children's books and how joyful they can be. So, um, Liz, if you want to go first. Sure. sure. That was creepy. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh my. Let's see. I'm not sure where the feedback is coming from, but I'm afraid we're not. Maybe I'll actually go first, then I can see if I can Yeah. Um, maybe headphones. All right, well, if Selena, do you want to go ahead? Okay, I hope that Let's see if that happens. Okay, hi, I'm Selena Yu. Oh, there it comes. What should I do? We all have the headphones, if possible. We should all wear them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I left my wireless ones downstairs, so. <laughs> okay. Hey Liz, do you Hello? have headphones or something? We're, we're happy. <laughs> oh, you're getting them. What is Jenny, did your other panel go smoothly? You didn't have this echoey issue? Um, we've had- Because I know this isn't your first one. Um, this is actually, I normally don't do them actually. This is my second or third one that I've done. Um, but in, things have happened. It doesn't always happen. Um, but usually the headphones help a lot because what happens is the noise gets picked up on the mic mm -hmm. from like different mm -hmm. directions and it, I, I'm not a techie person. <laughs> Don't have the best. Yeah, I'm not either. But <laughs> okay, how how do I sound now? Great. Okay, I just have a little bit of that. Sound good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Phew. <laughs> um, I'll give another little short. <laughs> Welcome again, everybody. Um, to the Mysterious Galaxy Picture Book panel. Um, we have four amazing authors with us. All of their books. You, if you like to find them, they can be found at the little button on your screen um, where it says find their books here. So um, we're gonna start off, I'm gonna have everybody just introduce themselves and a little bit about their books and what they do and then we'll get going. And Liz, if you wanna go first. I'm afraid to talk, okay good. There is a little <laughs> bit of a delay on my end so if I'm speaking slowly, I'm just trying to make sure I'm making sense. <laughs> my name is Liz Climo. Um, I have a blog where I post animal comics and I have some picture books and some comic compilations. And for about uh, 10 years or so, I was an artist on The Simpsons. And so my background is in animation. And now I um, do children's and picture books. So yeah. Cool. Uh, Very cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Selena Yoon um, and I'm a children's book author, illustrator, um, book designer and also format engineer. Um, I've written and illustrated and designed about close to 200 books, lots of books. Um, but in the last eight years or so, I've been focused on picture books. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about my Kaida Stuck, which is a whole different format um, for me. Um, it's my only um, early reader series. So um, I'm excited to talk more about yeah. that today. But that's what I do. Anyway, thank you. Um, Connie, do you want, would you like to go next? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Connie Schofield Morrison. I'm a children's book author. I wrote my well, my first book was entitled I Got the um, Rhythm, just in case you don't know. And alongside of that, I'm new to producing and um, writing uh, scripts. So I'm currently cool. working on a script. Um, 
which I can't tell the title, <laughs> but it's an adult um, cartoon. And I'm also married to um, Frank Morrison, who's an uh, illustrator slash author. Um, and outside of writing, I'm a beauty connoisseur. So I have uh, my very own cosmetic line coming out. It's actually dropping the 1st of October. And um, it's, it's called Icon Cosmetics. So that's what I do. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. On the launch. Nice um, to meet you. I really love your lipstick, by the way. I know. <laughs> <It's so pretty. laughs> Thank um, you. Christina, do you want to? Hi. Um, it's really great to meet you all virtually. Uh, this is my very first panel discussion. Um, and this is also my debut picture book that I'm going to be oh. discussing today. Yeah. Um, so, oh, <laughs> it's congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I feel really flattered to be asked to be on this panel, especially with, you know, people that I've known of in the industry and, you know, people who have um, quite a bit of um, experience behind them. So I feel like the newbie in the group, but at the same time, I'm just really excited to um, get to know the industry a bit more and other creators and also I kind of need that incentive to keep going because you know right now <laughs> things are a little bit difficult plus sure. I'm a, a new parent I have a nine-month-old oh. baby oh, congratulations. congratulations thank you <laughs> thanks so much new baby so, and new book I know yeah right? in the same year more, more, more or less yeah <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's just wonderful to be here and to meet you all and to uh, discuss um, children's books. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, Thanks. Yes, I'm also a new mom. We have an 11 Congrats. month old running oh. around. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, new bookstore and new baby. I know. <laughs> and, and the pandemic. It's been great. <laughs> oh my God. I know. Um, yeah, so. Much of my life is picture books right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we'll start with perhaps an easy question, perhaps a difficult question. But why picture books? Any of us just jump in? <laughs> Any of us? <laughs> uh, you know what? It's, um, I think it's interesting. If you don't mind, I'll just I'll just begin. Um, you know, being a new mom, um, my kids are now um, 15 and 16. But I started writing. I started reading picture books when they were um, about three or four years old. When I transitioned from reading board books to picture books, and that's what got me started in being interested in writing. Uh, picture books because before then um, my whole world was just board books so about a hundred and forty of my books are board books for babies and toddlers wow. um, and I was I was creating books even before I had children um, but when I had the babies and then I was reading picture books I'm like oh you know it's I was inspired by reading them I wanted to do my own and that was my first attempt and so my first picture book that I uh, wrote the story for it was um, Penguin and Pinecone and the character itself was inspired by my son, who was um, very observant as a child. He would just like he he would just get a leaf and just stare at it, you know, for for minutes long, which is just a little unusual for a young toddler. But he would just look at things um, with such curiosity, and um, that sort of inspired the character of Penguin, and then you know, which I developed later into a story, but. Um, it was really having children that inspired my picture book um, journey. I'd, I'd be interested yeah. in hearing your story, um, Liz. Uh, yeah, I. so my grandmother, her name was Shirley Climo. She was also a children's book author, and she did a lot of um, retelling of folklore was most of her stuff. Um, and so growing up, I always wanted to do children's books and sort of follow in her footsteps. And then I got an animation and did that for a while. And I sort of started doing comics after that and tried doing more of like an adult sensibility, like jokey sense of humor, a little bit edgier stuff, excuse me. And then I realized that children's books are just way more my speed. <laughs> and I have a daughter, I have a seven year old. So um, I sort of transitioned out of animation and into children's books. And then as my daughter's gotten a little older, I've been reading more and more. And so now I'm just, like really excited about doing children's books and trying to do them well. So, and also I just draw really 
like young like <laughs> my drawings are very mm -hmm. so it just makes sense <laughs> yes i get that <laughs> uh -huh. let's see okay Connie? so my yeah. story is different i've written all my life um yes hold on frank i'm on with the um team so i've written all my life and um really didn't have anyone in my family that was like me my mom and dad, you know, were young having me, but um, growing up in New York, I felt like I didn't have a voice. So my voice was my pen and my paper, and I would write everything down. And um, as I began to have kids, which I'm a new grandma. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. I have, um, Congratulations. Thank you. Um, four of my kids are grown, and I have a late in life baby who's nine. But um, when I started having, um, my children 29 years ago, um, I noticed it wasn't too many books with um, little African-American boys and um, girls on the covers. And um, I would write the books, but I would never do anything with them. And my husband was already an established um, world-renowned artist um, and illustrator. And so he convinced me <laughs> one day to... Um, do something with my books. Um, and so, you know, I guess Frank was the push to um, me um, actually finally getting a voice and, um, you know, speaking. So what I like to do um, through my books is I try to recreate because I had to think outside the box growing up. My reality showed me terrible things. And so I would recreate my own um, way of how I was living in my head and um, write it down. So I try to create happy, joyful, jumpy books um, to, you know, get kids in the mood of who they are within themselves and not um, who their parents may depict them to be or who society may tell them they have to be. Um, so that's my journey. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the books are, so, and your, the writing is so musical in your books. It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, Christina? Well, um, yeah, I, I guess I've been writing throughout my life, but it was, you know, kind of stuff that was more just for me, and I never showed anyone, and <laughs> I was always drawing as well, but I never really knew how to turn that into a career. So I, I went through a few different journeys. Um, I started off as a graphic designer and, and I did my undergraduate in that. And um, eventually, uh, I think I just kind of had a, a change of heart um, and felt like it, it just wasn't fulfilling enough. So I ended up getting um, a master's and a, a teaching fellowship. So I taught for subsequently taught in New York City and then in London. Um, and that experience was so valuable, just kind of getting to know like how children respond to books and what inspires them and um, just kind of, you know, the importance, as Connie said, of children seeing themselves represented um, in those books, not only physically um, or, you know, through the illustrations, but also, you know, knowing that someone who might look like them as written books and, you know, getting that, those words out there. Um, but I just thought it, it inspired me so much that I also wanted to do it as well. And I think um, with that, I just started to um, take some of those experiences of children that I knew, but then also went back to my, my childhood and the little struggles that I had were mainly how to get that creativity through without feeling judged. And so that's kind of what Nola's Scribbles is all about. It's like that hesitation that you have with getting your own work out there and the little hurdles you have to get over and the little voices that you have to mm -hmm. push aside to get that out. But that's, you know, that's the first one. Now I have to work on what's next. <laughs> <laughs> Always the question, right? Yeah. Um, and so this, I mean, my next question kind of touches on some of this, but one, uh, what I was going to ask is um, as writers and as kind of children's books in particular, where um, you know who your audience is, is both kids and their parents, 
what do you kind of prioritize when you sit down to write the book? Or another way to think about it might be, um, what what do you hope to accomplish? Like what what do you see as kind of the most important thing that you want to get across to your reader? In uh, and it, I'm sure it's probably different with each book, but kind of you know when you're going through your creative process, what kind of remains at the top of what you're looking to get out? Um, Connie, do you want to start this time? I'll start. So mine's is um, core values in life that money can't buy. Um, and the first um, aspect is positivity. So I, uh, I loved Wonder Woman growing up. And so I, if things don't make sense to me, I can't comprehend it. So I'm not the type of person that could watch a comedy show and laugh because if it's crazy to me, I'm sitting there trying to figure it out. Like, why would they say something like that? That's not funny. So with Wonder Woman, I knew Wonder Woman was who she was. So who's Connie? So my power was my positivity. It didn't matter what I saw, what I heard. Um, as long as I stayed positive, I realized that was my power. I stayed happy. It did not matter. So when I write, I try to write um, where kids will um, understand or recognize their power, whether it's self, you know, their self-love, uh, if they have a heart of gold and they, you know, love to, to give love, um, uh, peace. Uh, I tr just try to write um, things that once a child, something small, but once they uh, hear it or read it or see it through um, the illustrations, they recognize what their power is. That's great. So, okay, cool. Um, that's a hard one to follow up. I know. So. I'm like, <laughs> did you want us to jump in or I, that's okay. I'm waiting for you to <laughs> please say. You can explain it. <laughs> Okay, well, you know, um, I love what you said. Um, that's exactly, I, I think, how I feel about my books. It's um, it's to empower children. It's to make them feel like they have a voice that uh, I want characters that they can identify with, that they can love. Um, and with um, this book in particular, My Kite is Stuck, um, it's, the main character is this little guy right here, Little Duck. Um, and what's interesting about him is um, he doesn't use any words in the book. It's a dialogue only text um, and he has no words. And so you really have to follow along the story by looking at the pictures. Um, but he really is the hero of the story and, and each and every one of the stories um, that are in these books. Um, there are three short stories in each of um, these books. And um, another little interesting thing about it is um, I identify with Little Duck the most. In fact, um, with my picture books, Penguin, um, my first son, um, inspired Penguin. And for my bear series, um, it was my second son um, that inspired this character. Um, but when I wrote this one, um, it was really um, the characters. All of my books have, um, they're inspired by real people in my life in some way, just a little bit of their trait. And then I developed that character from, from someone real. And with um, Duck Duck Porcupine, um, Little Duck is me and Big Duck is my older sister. Um, and when I was growing up, and I'm still this way, I'm really shy, I'm an introvert. Um, and I didn't say much when I was a little kid. I would let other people talk and I would listen, but I didn't say much. And so that's why I made them quiet. And, and any time that I use myself as the inspiration for a character, it's interesting to me. I realized it later that the characters don't talk. Um, this other book that I have, Be a Friend, um, and the, the illustration style is totally different, but I also illustrated and, and wrote this book. Um, but the character that, that I identify with is um, Dennis, who's a mime, and he doesn't speak either. And so it's interesting whenever I use myself as the inspiration for a character, it doesn't speak, um, but they do have something to say. And so this book is for children that feel like they don't have a voice um, and and to empower that, that um, it's in these stories and they're really silly and funny stories. Um, you know, Big Duck, um, being that she's older, 
than him. Um, she's a little bossy and I think, and not all older siblings are bossy, but sometimes they are. And the younger ones tend to go along with whatever they say. And the younger one sort of feels like they don't know as much. They don't know how to do things as well. Um, and this book kind of, these stories kind of tell you, no, you know, you actually do have a lot to say and you can make a difference. And so, um, and it's kind of interesting. I, if you look at the cover, um, Little Duck is the only one that's looking at you directly. And he's the one that breaks oh, um, through that fourth wall. And he's the one that really connects with the reader. And so um, I feel like this book is for kids that feel like, um, like I say, like their voice isn't heard. They feel really small and, and powerless. And hopefully this will be uplifting um, and give them a sense of more power, you know, in their lives. <laughs> Christina, do you want to go next? Yeah, um, it is hard to follow up to really good inspiration. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, being relatively new, I think I only have a couple of uh, situations where I have actually sat down to write and to illustrate. Um, and I have some other ones that are unpublished, but, you know, with no love, like, I think the main thing was that I, I had an idea, and this went back to graduate school, of like how I you know, wanted to get back into something creative because I felt like that is a personal need that I had. But then I had this other side of me that wanted to focus on, well, in what way can I share my two passions of both education and literacy and you know, my own personal need to create. And so not only my personal struggle of going back to um, design and illustration and, and those skills that I hadn't utilized in years and I felt super rusty, especially amongst my peers, you know, other people who were already established or out there that I felt like, well, this is just not ready to see the world. Um, even before publication or during publication, I didn't feel ready to put it out there. Um, but I think just overcoming those hurdles was a whole part of the story itself, of you know, not being afraid to put out your work and, and knowing that like if it means something to you, then hopefully it will mean something to someone else. Like a child can mm -hmm. relate to the story of a some type of creative struggle, of um, drawing a blank because you're focusing too much on um, other people's expectations rather than your own work or what makes you happy. And so I am overall, like, I think I got that message across in this book in a way that I also felt happy with. Um, but with some of my other stories that I'm working on or have been working on, I think I'm always looking for that sweet spot between like, well, what's, what do I enjoy creating? And at the same time, what is relevant to the reader or to that reader's family or in the classroom or in the library or mm -hmm. however they might access that text because they, they want it to not just be something that looks pretty on a bookshelf, but actually make sense within that child's life or their family's life. Definitely. Great. So, thanks. <laughs> Good. See, now I've waited till the end after all the great answers and I have to follow up. <laughs> um, so coming from like a web comic perspective, I, it, initially it was just trying to be funny. Like I wanted to make people laugh, but the more work I did, uh, the more I realized I wanted as many people as possible to see my work and not feel excluded by it. So like every time I try to approach a new idea or a new book or a new comic, I think, well, this is funny, might be funny to this person, but how could it maybe not be so funny to this person? So I really try to approach with the um, kindness in mind and compassion in mind. And um, as far as my book, this is my book, Your Mom, that I'm talking about today. And it's about being a mom. It's about motherhood. motherhood. Um, and it's about all the different, I try to make it about all the different kinds of motherhood or you know, because that looks like a lot of things to different people. And, um, you know, like, for instance, I have friends who don't have their own biological children, but they are mother figures. So I wanted to just reach as many people as possible who might have had that connection with the mother figure. Um, and for me, I lost my own mom when I was in my early 20s. And so I wanted to talk about sort of that, you know, moving on without a mother um, after having that strong bond as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
great. Yeah. It's, my condolences. I also lost my mom very young, but no. the images in your book are so sweet. It's oh, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so my next question is kind of a two-parter. Um, first, which is maybe like the more thoughtful aspect is when you are kind of creating your books, how do the how do the images and the illustrations develop alongside the text for you? Like what is kind of your process first or you know, is it is there a what came first, the word or the picture? And then the kind of follow up is, do you have a favorite illustration in your books that you're just you must share? With us? <laughs> <laughs> Christina? You haven't okay. yet. Um, no, not yet. <laughs> so yeah, the process of I've actually experimented quite a bit with. Um, I can't say I stick to one process yet because <laughs> I'm still developing it. But for well, this story went through so many iterations, and initially it started as a single idea and maybe a couple lines of text here and there. Um, and then the designer, the previous designer in me kicked in and I had storyboarded everything, you know, so that uh, considering the page turns and reveals and everything. And then once I tried to lay in the text, I realized that didn't work. So <laughs> basically I wrote and rewrote and revised. And then of course, with the help of the publisher and the editors revised multiple times <laughs> to a point where I had pretty much redone most of my illustrations. Um, but I am happy with the end product. I have mm -hmm. to say, like, it was a learning process for me. And I'm hoping going forward that I can streamline it a bit more. But I do find that I personally have to wear like two separate hats. It's like I have to sit down and do the writing, you know, with a cup of coffee or whatever. And then when I do my illustrations, I have to focus only on those. So I I'm not really able to synchronize them just yet. <laughs> um, but as for my favorite one, I think um, I have to say probably the spread where Nola is just in her own like little world where she's physically so scribbling cute. over it's the so background. Pretty. I love it. <laughs> of her city. So I'm not sure how much you can see from there, but yeah. Oh, it looks Wow. <laughs> I think it that's really expansive. It's so pretty. Thank you. Uh, the most inspired <laughs> illustration. That one. And the one that feels the most free. And, I, uh, I get that. True to its original. original so. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about Liz? So for me, oftentimes it's like, it's one or the other. I either will have the idea um, and I'm like, oh, I, this is really what I want to say. And here's an illustration that will help sort of get that idea across. And then other times it's like, here's a really funny, or I think funny idea that I have, now I have to write something for it. <laughs> and I guess it's like, that's very webcomic centric. Um, but for for this book, for your mom, when I sent the first draft in and it was all written, there were a lot of questions about, I'm not sure what you're saying here from my editor. And it's because it was, I was like, oh no, no, I promise it's gonna work. It's in my head, the illustration's gonna make it work, I promise. <laughs> So a lot of times the drawing is what punctuates like the actual sentiment, um, and I, I, I there's a lot of there's a lot of illustrations in here, but I'm just going to open to one. This is one that I like. So here's um here's a hedgehog, and it's baby, and all the questions Aww. the baby is asking are questions that my daughter actually asked me. So why is the sky blue? Do carrots have feelings? How do you spell J? And what does mean mean? <laughs> wow. And so at the end, the hedgehogs is like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer any more questions. <laughs> I like yeah, that we, because it reminds me of her. <laughs> yeah. We have not wow. gotten to that stage with our daughter yet. It's more like a <laughs> <It's coming. laughs> random noise <laughs> questions. <laughs> um, uh, Connie, what about you? I know you collaborate. With okay. So um <laughs> I need peace and quiet when I'm writing so that I could go into um my thoughts with this I got the rhythm series um um Frank is probably the only person that could have captured um my views of I, I got the rhythm I got the rhythm was never really edited I 
did the book, listened to Frank, found an agent, and she was like, oh my gosh, and got publishing houses to fight over the book. So um, I don't have the time now to like write how I used to, like now I'm writing one, two, three. I think it's three books now at the same time, <laughs> at the same time. So um, I kind of have to switch up when I'm writing. So I get bored. I look at words like words are big to me and magical. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell people because a lot of people think me and Frank is in the same space. Like we're in this house. He has a studio upstairs and I'm downstairs in my makeshift office while COVID is going on in the, in the guest bedroom. So um, <laughs> we cannot work together because he he's um, a perfectionist, so to speak, and how I think he creates. So there's, and if the kids and Frank tell me I'm like borderline OCD, like everything has to be organized for me and the, it have to smell good and I need light <laughs> like I need not perfection but just peace to write where Frank needs music and he has toys everywhere oh I relate to that so much my husband yes and I, me too. I'm the red <laughs> I'm like you. brushes I relate yes <laughs> so um in order for me to get inside of my head it just has to be like now I'm looking at a bunch of trees and like blue sky. So it has to be like I I write better out in nature by myself with the bugs and the birds and the trees. Um, and like my writing is, is like my experience is different. So we kind of sort of collaborate, but we don't like I do the words. And I'm like, here, Frank, here you go. And I don't even, it's a couple of times, you know, he'll say, well, Connie, look at this. But um, I just wait until he's done. Um, and with this, I have a history um, series that I started. He's not the illustrator for that. I don't even know who the illustrator is yet. But um, these particular people come to me in dreams, which is kind of, Scary in a sense, but um, I have the first one was Elizabeth Keckley. Never heard of her. Um, really didn't like history growing up. I <laughs> never liked reading history books because they were always horrible. And the painting, like the colors and the illustrations, were always dark, dark colors. Mm. And I like bright, <laughs> as y'all can see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, <laughs> with the history series, Elizabeth Keckley came to me in a dream, and I'm like, okay don't come again. <laughs> and she asked me to write her book. She told me a bunch of stuff. Remember I said earlier, if it don't make sense to me, I can't comprehend it. Um, so like these, I got the rhythm books. They just, I can write them like in a day with the history books. It's different. So, um, my writing is, it's unique. It's, I guess it's different. I'm, I'm not going to get too much into Elizabeth Keckley right now. <laughs> it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. But um, the question was, like, if I had a favorite page, this was probably my favorite page. And it's because Frank depicted me and um, my oldest daughter is 23 and my youngest daughter is nine. And so... Her name is Miraculous, which I never tell. Um, and he created who I would have probably wanted to be as a child. Just a bright, little, happy, you know, African-American girl in the city. So. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Selena? Um, so process, um, and I answer this question a lot when I do my school visits because being that I'm an author and illustrator, you know, I ask my um, audience what they think that I do first, if I do the writing or the illustrating, and I'm going to tell you the answer. Um, I actually sort of do both, and I didn't even know you were going to ask this question, but I have the sketches um, with me. I start off with um, just on a 
a piece of note paper. I don't even use sketch paper because I don't want to um, make it too precious. And so it's much easier to just sketch roughly um, without worrying about it. So I'm not focused on uh, making nice drawings or, you know, it just doesn't matter. If, if I think that it's terrible, I could just, you know, go to the next page. But um, when I think of a story, um, there's something I do before even putting anything down on paper, and that's thinking about the story. And I run the story over and over in my mind in different ways. And once I think I have a story, like a fun problem, you know, to sort of dive into, um, and I think of how I can depict that problem. And um, so I think of the story as scenes, like in a movie or something. And then I um, thumbnail out that particular scene. And it never starts from beginning to end. Um, it doesn't go sequentially like that. I always start with either the funniest scene, the thing that, um, the scene that I think makes the story the funniest or the mo most heartfelt or whatever it is, the, uh, the scene that is the most important to that story. I start with that. And it may change later, but that's what I start with. And then if I know the ending or I know how I want it to end, then I'll you know, put that in there as well. And then I build out from it, you know, then I'll fill in how would a story begin if I have this problem and if I have this ending. But if I have the beginning first, then I fill in those other areas um, to develop the story. But it's never se sequential. I always start with uh, the scenes that move me most. And I always start with drafting the scene um, with the visual. And the words for me always come after that. And so I look at the scene, when I look at the pictures, then um, it's, for me, it's better to write after that so that I'm not narrating the actual uh, visual scenes. I want to add to it um, what the visuals aren't showing. So um, that actually helps me edit the words. If I would, if I wrote the story um, without thumbnailing it out first, then I think it would be very wordy because I've done that before and it gets sort of repetitive because I'm like, well, I already show that in the images. So um, it works better for me when I thumbnail out the scenes and then add in um, the words after. But just quickly before I forget, Christina, I was also a graphic designer. Um, <laughs> I, that's what I studied back in school. And just yeah. like you, it didn't felt it didn't feel fulfilling enough. And so I went back to school to learn illustration and that's when I decided to go into children's books. But, and um, I, I think we have other artists, right, in the family. And my husband is also an illustrator, uh, a fine artist. Um, and so he has his own studio um, at the opposite end of the house. I have it in the front of the house. And I have a separate reading room, a separate paper engineering room. And this is my office studio. And so there's all kinds of creative spaces in our home. So that's kind of interesting Whoa. that we have these things in common. I love always when there's like commonalities, but also so many differences in the way that we produce writing and produce art. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a writing instructor by day at oh. college. And oh. so we talk a lot about like playing, or I try to talk a lot about convincing them to like play with different strategies when they're first learning to write. And so I always like hearing the differences, but then also like, I also, don't really work in the same space as my husband. And we have very different <laughs> strategies for how we mm -hmm. kind of tackle these sort of projects. So um, I just always like listening to that. Uh, we yeah. do have a few questions. So I have some more, but I wanna make sure that we get to some of the audience questions. And the and number one that's come back so far is people wanna know what picture books from your childhood have influenced and inspired your own picture books. Oh, we have another visitor. Oh, yes, this is <laughs> <laughs> Oh, little book. Oh, cute. Um, um, Selena, okay. you want to go first? Sure. Um, gosh, I, you know, if I, I usually keep that book on me, um, but it's Oh, What a Busy Day by Gaio Fujikawa. Um, it's so beautiful. And um, it, what's interesting about my story is, you know, I was born in South Korea and I came here to the country when I was um, four years old. Um, and so um, my parents didn't read, speak, you know, um, English. And so they couldn't read storybooks to me. Um, and so my parents actually never read um, uh, books to me. Um, we didn't have a lot of books at home. Um, and there were a few. Um, but one that stood up, um, stood up to me was, um, oh, what a busy day. Um, because the illustrations, you know, had all of these children. And it's just, it's 
beautifully illustrated. Um, and I would make up the stories uh, by looking at the pictures. And so um, these stories were going through my mind and I, I'm sure that that influenced me in the way that I think about stories now. Um, and because we didn't have a lot of books, you know, I would spend hours just looking at each of the pages. Um, so um, that one is one that I, um, uh, that I think about, you know, when I think, you know, why I chose to become an illustrator or an artist. I didn't know that I was gonna be an illustrator of children's books, of course, but um, I remember wanting to be an artist uh, when I was five. And I'm sure that that book influenced um, that sort of idea. Um, Connie? Okay, so growing up, um, there's not too many uh, childhood books that I could say as a child I enjoyed because my mom, like we was so into her religion. So the only book that was allowed in our house was the Bible. And I had to get up every day at the break of dawn, like five, six o'clock in the morning and pray and read the Bible. So, I mean, I, I know so many inserts in the Bible by heart, like probably chapters. Um, somewhere in the fourth grade, fifth grade, Mr. Brackman was my fifth grade teacher. Um, I had a, like it's, he sparked an interest in creative writing. And so at that point I picked up um, Beverly Clearly was uh, <laughs> one of my favorite authors in Judy Bloom. So I read the Ramona and Beavis and um, all of Judy Bloom books. So that was my um, childhood experiences. But as I got a little bit older, um, I enjoyed Ezra Jack Keats books. And it was one little um, show on Sesame Street. It wasn't um, actually a book that I saw, but I enjoyed the stories and I would try to recreate. And it was Billy Joe Jive. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that. Um, it was this little cartoon that comes would come on Sesame Street every now and again. And it was um, Billy Joe Jive. He was uh, like a little investigator and he had a little sidekick. So <laughs> <I'm cool. laughs> that was my um, childhood reading. And just to say um, with the Bible, a lot didn't make sense to me. So I would recreate the stories in my head. And today I still do that. Like <laughs> I will recreate the story in my head as if it's now. So the way they speak in a Bible in my head, I kind of put myself in like a city setting and start when I'm reading a Bible, I tend to <laughs> recreate the um, stories in my head so that I can understand it with you know how i live today so very cool um christina okay um yeah it's hard to pick a specific one um i think similarly i didn't have a lot of books in my home growing up um just because i think my parents were more like well that's what the library is for <laughs> so we did often take trips to the local library and i just thankful for that. I just, I feel like that was like a little refuge that, and even like the tiny library in our school. Um, mm -hmm. I think those spaces I were so important to me as a kid. And that's why they're still so important to me now and why I you know feel they're so important to children, but some ones that really stick out. Um, I remember the first time uh, a teacher read Streganonna to our kindergarten class because it was actually a male teacher who came in to our, te um, to our school from a different school. And it was just kind of interesting for me because in the school where I was, it was mainly female teachers and just having this like, oh, wait, hold on a minute. Like men can be teachers too. Like having this <laughs> role model who we didn't, you know, you don't always see as like a, a nurturer and I think that was important just to you know for people to see children to see like men reading books or people that aren't like the traditional teacher or librarian I think that just 
reading not just the literature itself, but the space in which it's presented was is really important. And there was something really that struck me about that experience and the book itself written by and illustrated by Tommy De Paula, who became one of my favorites. Um, wow. My parents are Italian immigrants and the book is like about pasta going wild and you know they mentioned <laughs> nonna which is you know my grandmother's you know the tiny word for grandmother and i it just was so inspiring to me that you could actually do this you could write books and illustrate them and they can be really weird and not have to make much sense but you know it's still so inspiring and then one of the library ones that really stuck out to me um and this is still like early childhood, but a little bit of is um, just anything by Shel Silverstein because they kind of push the envelope a little mm -hmm. bit and the illustrations were just so simple and the text was usually rhymed, but it wasn't sweet. And I think yeah. that kind of, you know, those. any kind of <laughs> stories that, um, that children respond to, whether it's like, you know, it, it can be something that's really, they can learn from, but it can also be something that's just like a little bit, you know, like mm, your parents wouldn't say that, but maybe you can say right. it in a book. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah, we had, we had all the shelves over <laughs> to um, I really like the one with the alphabet one, the A to Z one. I don't know why, um, but <laughs> Liz, <laughs> yeah, Shel Silverstein was my answer. <laughs> it's, I totally agree. It's um, I tend tended to well, I love Shel Silverstein, especially as a child and as an adult, because I love the idea that you could do these very simple drawings that would convey so much. Because that's how I draw. Like I've tried to do beautiful rendering. I don't do it well, so I need I need to see other like sort of like expressive, simplistic sort of. And I say that Shel Silverstein's not exactly simplistic. His stuff is amazing. But um, as a child, I would say that anything that was a little bit, was funny, but was also just a little bit creepy, a little bit weird. <laughs> so Shel Silverstein, um, I liked Edward Gorey's stuff. So like the Gashley Crumb Tinies I love as a small child, which is a little weird. Um, and comics like Calvin Hobbes and The Far Side, I was like, the seven-year-old reading desk calendars, joke after joke <laughs> after joke after joke, because I was just like so interested in trying to be funny myself. <laughs> that was my goal. <laughs> um, awesome. So uh, another question was, have any of you written stories that aren't picture books? And would any of you who haven't consider it? Uh, Liz, do you want to go first? Oh my gosh, let's see. I was just thinking, <laughs> have I? I, I, I haven't actually written anything specifically, but I do have, I say that the next sort of thing that I'm sort of thinking about are um, sort of animated show ideas, because that's mm -hmm. just what my background is. My husband is a director of animation, and so that's actually how we met on the Simpsons movie. So mm -hmm. he... And I was thinking about this when we were talking about office sharing earlier, because he's over on that side of the office. This is my side. There's no wall. He is like big ideas, loud laughter, like very just like, you know, boom, boom, boom. There's like shows going on, music going on. And I'm like focused, quiet headphones, like looking out the window, looking at squirrels run by. Like I have to be very, very calm. So we actually work together. Well, Physically, working together can be challenging because we work so differently. But as far as our ideas, um, I tend to oversimplify and sort of streamline, and he makes ideas bigger and bigger and bigger. So we've definitely talked about like collaborating and trying to do some sort of animated project, um, which is which would be for an older audience probably. So aside from that, I haven't really written or thought about writing anything for older kids, but maybe someday, I guess. <laughs> someday. Um, what about you, Connie? I know you said you have written yes. so much. So <laughs> I oh. write, I write, I write all the time. And <laughs> I, um, I have a lot of uh, girlfriends that are writers. Um, two of my friends, Kimberly and um, Geely, we we're in a writing group together, it's five of us. And so they are YA writers and just sitting with them for two, three years while they um, 
created their um, first collab together, and it's called I'm Not Dying With You Tonight. Um, just the different attitudes the characters had to have, and they could write and write and write, and it wasn't, they wasn't told, oh, you're overwriting it, or oh, you're <laughs> overthinking it. Um, I started, I started writing a YA book, um, and if my agent is watching, this is probably her first time. <laughs> I just haven't put that idea to her yet because I'm doing so many um, different things and stuff that I didn't even bring up. I, I just have so many different um, careers. But um, I, I would love to write um, for older children and adults because... Like my simple books, they're not boring, but they're just too easy for me. And I like to write and I like to get in, in my mind and um, explore. And I really feel like um, my first time that you all will get to, to see or read um, how I'm able to explore, but it's actually the truth because it's somebody's real life, is the Elizabeth Keckley um, story. So it was challenging. Mm -hmm. I got to write a children's book, History. It's not dry. And I didn't have to tell all of the bad stuff. Like she was, a, we all know she was a slave, but I got to tell the good stuff. So, um, and I enjoyed it. So it's, it's a lot longer than my typical quick read. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the answer to the question is yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Definitely. I would love, and I am currently, but yes, love to write for um, older children and young adults. Okay. Um, what about you, Christina? Um, yeah, I have not <laughs> attempted to <laughs> write anything for adults or even middle grade or YA uh, just yet. But I think that just the more I get to know the industry, the more I'm seeing that there is some crossover that some like established picture book authors and illustrators will go into um, anything in like middle grade or YA. And some of them do it so flawlessly that I just I can't even imagine how it's possible. But um, I did. Um, I was. Um, Lucky that, you know, a couple of years back when there was no pandemic going on, I was able to attend some SCBWI conferences in person. Oh, yeah. And I was able to hear, I think it was um, Mike Carato um, gave one of the lectures and I he was showing us most of his picture book work. Um, but then um, towards the end, he was able to share a bit about one of his um, middle grade YA graphic novels that just currently came out, I believe it's called Flamer. And it, I mean, it's just really interesting to see how he kind of worked in some very important topics that maybe are just a little too early for younger children to start exploring. But, you know, once you hit middle grade and YA, like there are topics that would really lend themselves um, to be consumed within like a, a graphic novel form or even, I think that's something that I, I would consider a huge challenge, but I would definitely like to at some point at least give it a try. Um, I think it takes an extreme amount of discipline. Um, and also yeah. I've just never quite worked in that kind of panel form, but even if it's just a lengthier read, like a middle grade, um, I would love to attempt it. <laughs> Selena. Um, so I let my art dictate um, uh, what kinds of books that I write. And my art is really young and cute, you know, for really young kids. So I don't see myself writing for anyone older than picture book age. Um, and picture book, I would say, you know, around eight and under is sort of my core group. Um, but I do like to write outside of picture books, um, obviously, because I was doing that before. And so how I like to challenge myself instead of trying to write for older audiences is I challenge myself with um, trying different art styles. And this is a little bit unusual, I think, for an author, illustrator, and kid, but is that I change my art style all the time. It's not consistent. Um, I've started, I, I did traditional, I did digital, I've done things in between. So just as an example, this is like a board book for babies. 
that I did um, with um, oh, Wash. Wow. Um, it's mm -hmm. like a little peekaboo books. You, you you know try to guess what what animal it might be, and then you see what mm -hmm. it is on the next page. Really cool. um, so that's you know wash. Um, this is for actually this is sort of for an adult audience too. It's an all ages cool. book. Mm -hmm. and this is my graphic design side really comes out, and I actually engineered yeah. the book as well. Ooh, so that's cool. That's cool. Um, mm -hmm. And. So each and, and this is a book of poetry. Each one has um, some bit of text. Feel the flowers um, gently swaying. Bees are buzzing, um, prancing, playing, and so each one has its own little thing. This one has a beautiful. Looks like it's kind of listening. My favorite one. Oh, this one was really really hard. Um, this one says, uh, "Music pulsing, horses chasing, round and round, our hearts are racing." The feeling that you get from writing. Wow. So. And oh, sort of oh, yeah. <laughs> very, very tricky. Yeah. So the, this was challenging. Um, simple books like this that I did only on Illustrator, um, and then the flaps you can see. Um, this is a book on animal sounds. So um, and another art style, of course. Uh, this is sort of familiar uh, with my penguin and beer books. And then this one was done with pencil, um, graphite on paper, scanned in, then colored digitally. Um, and my Illustrations are very um, graphic, so they're not like like David Weisner or you know like the ill really illustrative. It's mm -hmm. very graphic, mm -hmm. uh, has a biographic design background. So I constantly you know try to challenge myself with new art styles, but still staying within mm -hmm. the children's group. Yeah, uh, wow. Tiffany made a comment in the chat earlier that she um, she loves the illustration style for be a friend. She really likes. That. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's see, we got time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, how do you choose and develop the main characters for your books? We've already kind of touched on this. I know a lot of, like, Selena, you talked about kind of being inspired by the people around you. Um, and Connie, you were also talking about, like, how you wanted to create the character that you never had, and that could have been you. Um, but I guess, are there any other things that kind of go into that choice? Is it really organic? Um, do you kind of get inspired uh, kind of spur of the moment -y or kind of how does that process, what does that process look like for you? And you want anybody to answer? You can go first, Connie. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so um, I don't know if I mentioned the I Got the Rhythm series is almost done. So I think it's two more books. I have, I got the um, Halloween spirit coming out. So Bloomsbury came to me and they want a little boy. So I find if it's not happening in the dream now um, with the children's books, they're coming to me and they're asking me, you know, can you come up with an idea for this little boy? And so I'll go like with the little boy, I kind of, you know, told Frank, um, Bloomsbury came to me and they want me to do a series with the little boy now. So it's, you know, he's like, oh, okay, cool. So he just off the top, he is, we've been married for going on 30 years. So, I mean, he pretty much knows me. I know him. So he's like, oh, I see him right now. He has dreads and he's going to look like this and he's going to look like that. And that's just off of me. I'm um, telling him, but now it's not even me thinking up a character it's like being asked to um do um like create a, a character or come up with a, a book series on a you know particular subject so at the beginning it was like okay miraculous is everything i wanted to be but um now <laughs> it's a little bit thinking. more structured yeah I guess, that way. yeah um, Christina? Okay. Um, so, so far, I mean, I do have some other stories um, besides this one that have not been published yet, but just for lack of getting into any detail, I feel like I, I always have someone in mind to inspire that character. Like, um, I'm working on something or have been working on something, but now I, I feel like I need to recreate it a bit more to reflect my daughter, even though she's only nine months old. But because it's kind of a parent-child relationship, 
and they're animals, but still, like, I feel now this new perspective, and I feel like I, I have to take that into consideration in this, or at least to inform those characters. Mm -hmm. Um, with uh, Nola, <laughs> she is an amalgamation of um, not just students who I've had. I mean, part of it is personal narrative. <laughs> I think a lot of um, my feelings and some of these, you know, parallel narratives of my own creative struggle went into that to inform that character. Mm -hmm. But also her personality was fleshed out a bit more by uh, a combination of some students who kind of really stuck out in my experience that just kind of had uh, an effect on how I see how they consume not just literature and literacy, but their everyday world, how they processed what was going on and put it into their own scribbles or drawings mm -hmm. or creations. Wow. And I feel like so much of... Um, and, you know, I don't want to say any specific names because like, I'm not supposed to call out children online. But I definitely had some who I was just amazed by their creative thought. I mean, I, I taught mm -hmm. special needs, but I feel like there were wow. um, certain strengths that, that uh, these children had that they could express in a certain way and wasn't always evaluated and wasn't always reflected in their grades or in everyday life. But um, I think that was such a huge inspiration in, for mm -hmm. me that I had to put that into a character. And wow. I am hoping I did them a service. <laughs> and, you know, I don't feel like this two-dimensional character can really, um, really reflect a, a child's uh, full-blown personality. But at least maybe a child can, can look at that character and be like, oh, she reminds me of me a little bit. Or, you know, <laughs> or at least they understand yeah. it a bit more. So. <laughs> I I am constantly inspired by my students. They're a, they're a lot older than your students yeah. you were, but like I don't know. I love watching people create and learn. So, uh, Selena. Um, well, that's um, it's an interesting question because, like I mentioned before, all of my characters in my books um, were inspired by someone real in my life, mm -hmm. and it, it may not be their entire personality, but I'll take one aspect of that personality and then develop it into a character. Um, and that's usually how my picture book stories go, but um, with one of my latest books, Kiki and Jax, um, that I collaborated with Marie Kondo, this was very interesting because um, she wanted a story um, that of course tied to her adult book of uh, the life-changing magic of tidying up and so she wanted to have a story that taught children um, not only how to tidy and um, but to inspire tidiness and um, to inspire uh, joy in their lives and and one way of doing that is I think organizing and cleaning that makes me happy if you go into a room and you've tidied it all up you know when you walk into it doesn't it make you happier I think mm -hmm. for many of us um, we do have that joy you know when everything's tidy um, and I know that, that not everyone is tidy but I think we all aspire to be to some degree um, that's why I think we all love hotel rooms right we go in and everything's just you know where it <laughs> yes. should be and I love it anyway <laughs> Um, so this was sort of interesting because I had to, um, um, I developed the characters after I thought about the story and I thought about what kind of characters could best tell um, the story that I wrote and of course one has to be messy and one has to be um, a clean and tidy. And so um, why a random owl and why a random um, squirrel? And it wasn't random at all. Um, the messy one, of course, is the squirrel because, you know, they, <laughs> they gather all their nuts and they just stuff them in. And so I'm thinking of it as sort of like a pack rat. And so this squirrel actually is very messy. Um, and I chose um, an owl to be the neat one because, you know, you think of owls as being wise. And I think of them as neat. I don't know if they're actually neat in real life. Um, but personality-wise, um, I took my own sort of slightly OCD ways of wanting things a certain way, being very tidy. Um, and there's a lot of me in, in uh, Jax, the owl character. And so I, I think about all of my characters in my books, and they all have a little bit of me. I think it's hard 
to write a character without any of you in there at all, even if yeah. they're sort of different, even Big Duck, even though she's bossy, part of me, it's like, I want to be bossy, you know? <laughs> I wish I could be bossy. And so there's a little bit of me, but I'm kind of, you know, showing it through a character that I write about. So, um, so yeah, there are a lot of different ways that, that characters are developed, sometimes story first, sometimes character first. Hmm. Cool. I'm, I'm definitely probably more of a squirrel type. <laughs> they're like tidy enough. I'm not. I, I'm not that tidy. <laughs> I like organized chaos. Uh, Liz, what about you? So I'm much better with um, I'd say like connections between characters than actual like creating a really rich background for a character itself. Um, and that might just be because I come from like a web comic background, and I like I'm used to sort of observing sort of nuanced uh, conversations and connections between individuals. And that's sort of how it um, shows up in my books. Like for this one and a lot of my other ones, it's more of an ensemble cast, I'd say, than like one particular mm -hmm. character. But I do try to, you know, create stories for characters that you might not see as often in other books. Like for instance, with uh, my first picture book series was Rory the Dinosaur, Me and My Dad, and his little boy dinosaur character and his dad character. And I think a lot of people were like, why wouldn't you make it a woman? Like, you're a girl, make it a girl character. It was actually sort of loosely based on my younger brother and my dad, because my brother was 14 when my mom passed away. And so, and my sister and I were both older and out of the house. So, you know, there would be mother-daughter dances, or I'm sorry, mother-son dances and things at school that he just didn't get to go to. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice for like a little boy to, you know, sort of see, or a father who's raising his child on his own to sort of see these characters. Mm -hmm. um, and so I do try to, I like, I will get an idea and zero in on those connections and be like, oh, I want to create a story out of that particular connection. Um, and so that's sort of where I get excited to do and create something new is to sort of create the story on that connection rather than like this character has this background and this character has this background. It's more about like how they interact with each other. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, well, we are at kind of the end of our time right now. Uh, I think those are all. Can I ask one quick yeah. question for everyone? When was your last haircut? <laughs> I'm so excited because I have my first haircut appointment next week and it's been like nine months for me. It's been so over when a was year. your last it really? It was before my daughter was born because I got my haircut oh, you tell before me she was one. born. Wow. And it hasn't <laughs> I, know. I had, had one in, I, have to cut I think oh, it had been wow. seven months for me, but then two weeks ago my friend had a friend who was a hairdresser and I knew she was uh -huh. getting tested every week. So she actually came over and did it on our front porch and we had masks on. Nice, <laughs> so I just got a quick nice. trim. Oh, so you have a fresh one. Very I nice. I have a pretty, yeah. Like my hair was very, Your very hair long. looks gorgeous. You must. Well, thank you. Yeah, you I used to do hair regularly. back in the 80s and the 90s. So you know I, know how to do hair. <laughs> yeah. I know how to do hair. So I just keep myself together yeah can you cut your own hair <laughs> yes really yes, i can't oh i'm yes. so jealous of that yes that's great <laughs> but you could see no, no. um well my first my last official haircut was probably before my daughter was born as well so at least over nine months uh, ago almost 10 yeah. and my mother and my sister were both hairdressers so i've kind of oh. biosmosis learned a little bit about it. So I was able to trim my own hair and it's trim. Yeah, nice. it's great, but it's yeah. trimmed. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'll just, and yeah. I'll just keep growing it until <laughs> I get sick. <laughs> yeah. wow. oh, yeah. well, it was my, so nice meeting all of you. All over the place. You too. Yes, it was a pleasure <laughs> meeting everybody. This was really wonderful. nice. Thanks That's everyone great. who came too. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Everyone that asked questions. That was so great. Thank you. I'm sorry if there are any that we didn't get to. Um, and thank you for sticking with us over with the sound issues at the beginning. But we had smooth sailing from there. So I'm gonna chalk it up to a win. Um but thanks. And again, you can find all of our lovely panelists' books, um, the ones featured for the panel and more at mysteriousgalaxy.com. Um and just a big thank you to everyone for joining us and stay safe.
Thanks for staying with me. Have a good weekend. Thanks for having me. If you're in California, stay cool. (laughs) (laughs) It is hot out. It's terrible. I'm not going outside again today. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, everybody have a great weekend. Bye. 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 You too. You too. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.